Greetings. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice. I say rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Old saints would say it's another day's journey and I'm so glad about it. Aren't you glad today God woke you up, started you on your way, and here it is, gave you another opportunity to get it right with him. Well, if that's you, man, I don't know what you are gonna do, but I am praising God on this Monday morning. God has been so good to me. Even when I tried to allow him not to be good, he still showed himself faithful to me. So I'm thankful today, thankful to each and every one of you who will at some point view this video. It is, uh, it is, uh, I think it's, it's like eight, eight o'clock here, 8 a.m. That is 8 a.m. here in, uh, Tanzania, which means, uh, let's see, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So it's nine o'clock here which means it's uh, two o'clock uh, on the eastern core of shores. So uh, you all are probably sound asleep and I am wide awake. I, I, I've been up now probably about an hour, so you gotta excuse the sleep in my eyes, but hey man, this is some of the best sleep I've ever had in my life. I've, I've, I mean, it's, it's a, I don't wake up in the night. I just, once I hit the pillow, Man, I am gone until God wakes me up the next morning. Some of the best sleep I've ever had. So I tell you, it's a beautiful thing. But I just want to share with you very quickly a couple things, just about 10 minutes or so of some things that uh, I've noticed. Number one, watch this. So I'm probably going to have to move here in a minute. I thought I was in a good spot, but the sun is starting to... I guess the sun is going that way. So give me a minute, let me move, because that sun's gonna beat me down here in a second. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna move for just a second. Let's just look at my my view here, but I gotta move this, this table. All right, I'm back. So yeah, I gotta hurry because uh, the sun is coming up uh, and it's it's coming right. It's gonna be right there in a minute. So I've got to really hurry here. But uh, I just wanted to share with you some things about yesterday. I had an opportunity to go and uh, preach at the, uh, uh, what's it called? First Baptist Church of Tanzania basically it was uh, back in 1956 that a missionary or colonizer whatever you want to call them came in and uh, helped establish the first Baptist Church and it was here in Dar es Salaam and here in Tanzania so I had the awesome opportunity to uh, be there yesterday and uh, also it was a uh, program where they honored their pastor who's who's about to retire at some point, who's soon to be retired. He's not long from retiring and they honored him yesterday as well. And so I had an awesome opportunity to participate in that too. So that was a blessing just to be there. And uh, truth, so, I, so the first time I met with the pastors here, I asked them, I said, okay, uh, what time does your service start? And, and everybody, so one thing I do know that we're on track, Lily Hill, is that all churches start at 10 or earlier here. Everybody, nobody starts after 10. No one, no church starts after 10. Everybody starts church at 10 or nine or eight or whatever the case is. So we're good. Man, I think the light's jacked. Hold on one second. Uh, 
So I'm gonna probably have to go this way. Got the lights terrible over there. Y'all gotta forgive me this morning. I'm trying to catch the light and not the sun. And it's just killing me. So I may have to, uh, there we go. There we go. All right, how you doing? Good, I'm doing well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Hmm. Power. Okay, good. Thank you. Gotcha. Appreciate it, my man. Thank you, brother. God bless you. I'm from uh, U.S., Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, what about you? I know New York. I've been to New York. Yeah, <laughs> you've been in New York? Yeah. You like New York? What's your, what's, your, what's your name, bro? Come over. Come over. Come Sadiq. Sadiq is my name. Salik? Sadiq. Sadiq. Yes. Hi. Okay. Yeah, Sadiq man, is my name. Welcome to Tanzania. <laughs> That's right, man. You will get stuck. You just go to reception, say, I need maintenance. People will come and help, help you. Come make it happen. Yes. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah everything's been great. Friend. Everything's been good, man. Yeah, so far, so good. So far, so good. Thank okay. you so much, bro. All right. So uh, that was Sadiq. He's the, uh, I guess he's probably, he's a worker here, manager, owner, I don't know, probably. More likely he's probably the owner's son or something like that. But anyway, uh, back to the thing, what I was saying, I went to the First Baptist Church of Tanzania today and we had a great time. And, and oh yeah, I asked the pastors when I first met him, what time do services start? And he was like, oh, 10. And, uh, I said, like, cool. Then I um <clears throat> I um and I said, what time to end? Oh, he says, uh, we they just start laughing. Like, we don't know. We don't have no end time. It's just like we have church for a couple of hours and then we may take a 20 minute intercession and come back and do a couple more hours. I don't know, six o'clock. I said, whoa, okay. I'm thinking dude's joking. You gotta be playing. Yeah, that's a joke. I go to church yesterday. Now, I purposely don't get there at 10. Purposely, because I know they don't. They don't CP time, for real. So I purposely know they own some CP time. They just gonna get the, so I purposely don't go at 10. I purposely leave the hotel at 10. To get there maybe 10.30. I get there at 10.30. I'm telling you, this is no joke. I'm sitting in the pastor's office. It's 11 o'clock. We're still sitting in there. It's 11.30. One of the preachers says, okay, we get ready to go start service. I said, huh? Now, I'm hearing music the whole time. He says, we get ready to go start church. Church is getting ready to start. I said, what do you mean? I said, so what are they doing now? Is that Sunday school? <laughs> he says, no, that's church service. And he, he, he started to understand, and then he says, no, that's church services, but that was just praise and worship. Bing, light goes off in the head. Okay, y'all, praise and worship has lasted two hours and a half. I'm gonna be here all day long. There you know, no doubt about it. I'm gonna be here a while, so I might as well get comfortable. So, uh, I skipped breakfast because I was supposed to go to eat with the pastor at the church for lunch. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna eat big, big lunch, so I'm not going, 10 o'clock, I'm good. Just got a banana or something before I left and some fruit, I'm good. So I get to church, we in the service now, and man, I'm telling you, we all black, y'all. One thing they didn't take away from us is black. We black, we African, man. We, we You cannot deny you're African if your skin's like mine. If you got melanin, you're, you cannot deny it. We just African, bro. Some things they couldn't take away from us. Took away the language, took away our names, took away our history, et cetera, et cetera. But they just couldn't take away the soul. We black. Deep down in our soul, we are African. Because them people, man, they dance, man. Good Lord, they got praise and worship. They got dance, man. They got the choir. They got it all. And they talking about, and they go on and on. It, it kind of reminds you and, and again, I wasn't at Lily Hill back in the day, but I've heard people talk about it, and I would I could, I could almost visualize this being the case. Y'all talked about getting out of church late, three o'clock in the afternoon, so I could visualize exactly what was happening back then. It's song after song after song, it's dance. It's, now, the, the thing that got me, and I'm gonna tell all pastors and preachers, if I ever invite you to Lily Hill Baptist Church, this is, this is the God on this truth, man. 
if I ever invite you, even if it's just as simple as to come and read a scripture, bro, sister, if you're on the program to read a scripture and you decide, you know what, I'm going to read a scripture from the book of Ruth. Sis, bruh, I have ADD. You cannot read the entire first chapter as a scripture for the book of Ruth. You just can't do it. Sorry, it ain't happening, man. Stop, don't do it. I'm just going to have to pull your little coat tip, bruh, sit down. Just don't worry about the scripture no more. We good. Because not only do I have it, a whole lot of other people got it, man. They just won't admit it. They just won't admit it. It's hard. It's hard. The, the average attention span for a human being to just sit in a class is only about 50 minutes. After that, you need a break. So, you know, it's it's tough. And that's even in church too, y'all. So it is what it is. But in the church, we have some things that get you up and sit you down. So that gets you, gets your blood flowing and your energy going. So it's a little different. So you, you can, your attention span can be a little longer, but still not five, six hours. I don't care what you are. So anyway, we do that. I had a great church service, man. Church service was good, though. I tell you that. It was a good service. It was long, but it was good. After church, I was supposed to go to lunch with the pastor, remember? He says, uh, you ready to go to lunch? I said, pastor, all due respect, I started fasting when I sat down in the church service, and I might as well just hold this fast until dinner. I'm just going to fast through lunch because dinner is only 30 minutes away. I mean, man, we were on church service, man. Good Lord, boy. Woo. So I slept good last night. I mean, I'm talking about I slept like a baby. I went out to Cocoa Beach. I only was out there for maybe 30 minutes or so. I'm going to go back out there. But, man, that's a beautiful beach. It's a local-owned local, local -owned beach. It's not commercialized, so it's locally owned. Uh, it was beautiful. The vendors are out there selling food. I had some chips, and I had some... Uh, some uh, sugar cane juice. Oh my God, that stuff is good. I think I'm gonna grow some sugar cane in my yard. That was good, man. That was good. Good, good, good. But anyway, I wanna tell you about my experience. My driver was not there with me yesterday. He was at church doing his own thing, praise God. But I had a new driver. And we get in the car and he starts speaking Swahili because, you know, hey, they all do that to me. I mean, if you look like us, they don't know. We know, but they don't have, they just start speaking in their language, man. They don't rely. They, it's not disrespectful. It's just you look like one of them. So you, boom, they gone. And then you have to look at them with that, you know, that deer in the headlight look. And I don't understand nothing you're saying. So when you do that, then they begin to understand, okay, this person understands nothing I'm saying. So anyway, we, uh, he says, bro, you got to learn to speak Swahili. You're, you brother like me, you brother just like me. Swahili is our language, man. We got to speak Swahili, boom, boom, boom. I said, bro, you're right. You're right, I do. So anyway, we're riding along and I told him, you know, he picked me up from the church and I, he says, and I asked him, I said, do you go to church? He says, no, nah, I don't go to church. That's why you don't go to church. He said, I got to work. He said, if I don't work, I don't eat. I got to get make money to take home to my family. I said, okay, I get, I get that. That makes sense. The Bible does say, man, who does not work, does not eat. That makes perfect sense. And then he says, church cost. I said, what do you mean church cost? He says, church cost me. It costs me my money. If I'm not working, it's costing me money. And then I have to give money to the church. So it, church cost. I said, I get that too, brother. You got you to gotta give. The Bible does talk about giving. And you should give and you should cheerfully give. You should be a cheerful giver. You should have no issues with giving. So he says, yeah. He says, so I, don't, I can't go to church. Not right now, anyway. Can't go to church. I said, well, we're riding and having this conversation. I said, brother, I think you got it wrong. He says, I got to work. I got to get food. And, and then... As long as I got food on my table for my family, then I can go to church. I said, bro, I think you got it wrong. He said, what you mean? I said, I think you got it wrong up here. I think the message is wrong. I said, I think what you're doing is right. But I think your message, the, the, your, your, the way you have it organized is wrong. 
I said, uh, the Bible also says, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together that we might be able to exhort one another so much more and seeing the approaching. Forsake not the assembly, brother. He says, yeah, 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 I understand, I understand, but I gotta work, gotta work, gotta eat, gotta eat, gotta eat. I said, so, but we gotta begin to understand there's things we just have to do. So watch this now. I said, so, I said, so right now work has become a burden to you. It's not, it's a burden to you. He said, what do you mean? I said, it's a burden. It's a burden to you. Because when you work, you can't fellowship God because of work. And I said, what you got to learn to do, man, is do it the other way around. You got to learn to fellowship and worship God. In other words, you are burdened and heavy laden. But the scripture says, if you come to me, you who are burdened, I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. If I am gentle, humble heart. And he says, if you do that, you'll find rest in your soul. And I said, right now you're working and you're not resting because you have yet to go to him. You gotta go to him first Go to him first and diligently seek him. Faithfully seek him and watch him do, provide for you. It's, in other words, I said, brother, try him and see if he does not open up a window in the heavens, pour you out a blessing, just one blessing that you won't have room to receive. I said, consider this, my brother. Start going to church. Carve out that time to go to church that you might then be able to see the blessings of God begin to be manifested in your life. So I said, and I said brother, I, I get the point, I get it, I get it. I said, man, I have not, not always been a faithful member of the church. Not always. No need to sit here and tell a lie. There's been times, uh, no, I've been, there's been times I ain't go to church for a long time. For whatever reason, you know. And when you think of what, and when I would go back in my mind and realize the reason I didn't go to church, they were just, it was all me. It had nothing to do with God. It was all me. But anyway, I said, man, but once I got myself together and started really get myself back in the house of God. God began to open up the windows of heaven, man, and pour out blessings I have not room to receive. Even to this day, I can't receive all of them. I said, listen, I said, I'm from America, Americani, they call it. I said, but I'm here and I've been here now. I don't even know how many days I've been here, y'all. I sleep so good, I can't remember. But I've been here a long time, at least three weeks. At least three weeks I've been here, I know. So anyway, uh, I told him, I said, um, I uh, I don't know, brother. I said, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I told him, I said, yeah, I am uh, working. I said, I said, but I'm here. Welcome aboard, man. Whoever just joined us, welcome, welcome to the, to the live is it's, if you're on the east coast man it's probably like 2 30 you ought to be in bed whoever you are it's eight at, it's like 9 30 over here almost so yeah i'm just getting it in while i can but uh i told the guy i said i i've been here like three weeks i'm gonna be here a couple more weeks and i said but he said you have no job i said no i don't have a job man so I, I don't i don't do jobs bro he said well how you get money I said, well, I have a business, a business. There's a difference between having a business and having a job, y'all. 
And I want to talk to you about that just quickly. I have a business. A lot of people have a job. If you have a if you have a job, your name may be on the LLC. Your name may be there as the LLC, uh, blah, 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 LLC, ABC, LLC. But, and you say it's a business, but let me tell you this. If it requires you to be there in order for it to function, that's not a business. You have a job. That's it. That's it right there. If it requires you to be there, you don't have a business, you have a job. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless the name of Jesus, y'all. Somebody thought they had a bit. I'm in business for myself. No, you have a job for yourself because if you have to be there, it's not a business, it's a job. A business does not require the owner to even have to set foot on the premises in order for the business to succeed. Do you think the owner of this hotel is sitting in some office right there? No, he's probably at home or probably on another site location looking to expand and develop his business, not his job. I don't do jobs, y'all. Somebody say, well, pastoring requires me to be there. That's a job. And you know what? In, in the general sense, it's a job. But when you have a calling on your life such as that, it's not a job. It's simply a uh, something you enjoy doing. You enjoy speaking to people about the goodness of God. So you, you feel good about it. So I enjoy doing that. So not a job but just because your name is on an LLC does not mean you have a business and we got to get that right businesses are like this I have a business I've been here for three weeks I gonna be I'm gonna be here a couple more weeks but my paycheck is still coming y'all it's a business it's a business didn't require me to be there. I don't do jobs anymore. The last real job I ever had, well, I did have this one job prior to this. So I was gonna say my last real job was when I was in the military. But after I got out, I started another job and I realized I don't like jobs. I need a business. And that's kind of how the business came about. But anyway, that's kind of how that worked out. But but I'm telling y'all that uh, we've got to begin to uh, create businesses for ourselves that God can open up more windows for you. Expand your thought process, expand your knowledge. If you're gonna do right, if you're gonna make it to the next level of your life, you've got to elevate your job. tax write-off. Go to Africa, man. Let the business pay for it. The government's going to take their money anyway. Why not? Because I'm having meetings. See, I'm over here. I'm, I'm doing church services. I'm doing uh, insurance seminars online. Man, I'm, I'm working. I'm working, y'all. Throwing a little leisure in here at the same time, but I'm working. The business take care of that. Praise be to God. But uh, also, since I'm on this business thing, I don't know where God put me there, but uh, you need to uh, get your business some credit. Now, let me tell you this. Your new business starting out. The credit that the business is going to be extended is going to be based on your personal credit right now. That's just the way it is right now. But as time progresses, it will be then based on your business, not your personal. So I, so, I, so I suggest and I solicit you all to do that. Start seeking your business credit. Start doing that. Start doing that. And then finally, as I get ready to go, 
because I'm going all over the place. I went from church to business. <laughs> Good Lord. Now I'm going to go to uh, Africans. We are Africans. Africans are us. We just speak a different language. But, we're, but deep down inside, we're the same people. We act the same way. We do the same thing they do. And, and the thing is this, y'all. These people are in our eyes what we call poor because they're poor in possessions. Possessions. In other words, they may not have the house that you have. They may not be able to drive the car that you drive. So they're poor in possessions. But they're not poor in their mind. They just understand that they're in a system that is constantly pressing them down. It's, this is the system that they're in. And it starts from the government. It presses them down. And they don't know how to come out of it. But what they do know is this. There's opportunities here. They just don't have the capital to get it started. That's it. If you came to Africa, man, I'm telling you right now. I'm, I was thinking just the other day. I mean, yesterday. I go to uh, Cocoa Beach. Dude has a sugar cane uh, little stand. He's selling sugar cane. Selling sugar cane. I had sugar cane, man. I've never had sugar cane juice, but I've eaten sugar cane back when I was a child. The sugar cane stick, which is sweet. Dude had a sugar stick, sugar cane, a little grinder, almost like the little meat grinder that we use, but it was a flattener grinder. So it would grind the juice out into a bucket. He'd take the juice, pure natural sugar cane, no, no additives or nothing. And then he would just put ginger and lemon to help with the taste, kind of get rid of some of the sweetness. Oh, it's great juice. I'll be back today to get some. But I was thinking, man, that's a business. Can you imagine, man, having a sugar cane business in the States where you're giving out natural sugar cane? And people could not only use it for juice, but you could use that sugar cane for all of the sugar additives and stuff that you have already. It's natural sugar. Oh, my God, man. My mind just be thinking business. So this trip is just not enough for me, y'all. Got to come back sooner than later. Because opportunity is here, and I, and I only got a certain amount of time on this earth, man. And if I'm going to leave my children and my children's children's something, I got to get busy. Because I, I really, man, I could just, I'm, I could just, sit back and chill right now for the rest of my life and, and really be okay financially be okay it'd be all right i'll be okay but that's not that's not where i'm at right now my goal man when god calls me home i want my great grandchild who may never even meet me great great grandchild who may never even meet me to be able to say, my great, 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 great granddaddy started this and now I'm the beneficiary of it. That's why all I want. If I could hear that in heaven, I'll tell myself, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all I want. So I'm, I'm telling y'all that, man, you gotta get this opportunity. Uh, I don't know if the opportunity is in the US, I'm not saying the opportunities for you is here. I'm just saying at some point in your life, you've got to stop and start thinking about the legacy that you're leaving behind. Will your children be struggling the same way you struggle? Will your grandchildren be struggling the same way you're struggling? Will your great grandchildren struggle the same way you struggle? At some point, ladies and gentlemen, you and I have got to say, you know what? I need to set something aside for the people who are coming after me in my bloodline. And until then, we're going to be in this perpetual cycle of just making pennies, hustling, hustling people out of dollars and cents 
when the rest of the world is creating wealth for their generations. That's all I'm saying, y'all. We gotta do it. So I just believe that this continent here will afford you an opportunity to create wealth. Here's what I say about Africa, and this is on, use this as your yardstick, and then tell me if you don't see what I see. This is what I say about this country. I said if I were to go back to 19, I'm gonna say 50, and it's probably beyond, it may be 40, I, I, don't, I don't know much, excuse me, I don't know about the 40s and 50s. I, 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 I never really studied it to kind of see, but I know how the 60s were. I know how the late, I know how the late 60s, early 70s were. I know that definitely not how the word late 70s were. Uh, early 70s were. So I think if you go back to the 60s, I'm gonna just say the 60s. 1960, and now look at America 2021. 1960, that's what, that's 61 years. Africa is 1960. That's it, that's it. Africa is 1960 in America. You were not afforded an opportunity to reap the rewards. Your parents weren't. That's why you're in the position you're in now. There was no silver spoon, but guess what? It's 1960 all over again, y'all. Here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity. Are you gonna take advantage of it? If you look at some of them videos, some of those videos I make, especially when I'm in the airport, I've got videos I need to upload. It's hard, I'll tell you one thing. If you know internet, man, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you. If you are a tech person, I'm telling you this right now, listen to me. If you got a child who's a tech person, you need to stop letting your child be afraid. Let them come to this continent, man, and make billions for themselves. Cause the internet, I think it's dial up. I'm almost sure it's dial up. I can't believe this live is still going. I think it's dial up because it's so slow. I got so many videos that I want to upload that it just, it, I don't have, I don't, well, I have time, but I'm not going to just spend all day sitting in the hotel room making videos. I want to see the country, man. So it's just not working. Video. So somebody in technology can make a lot of money here, man. God, you can make a lot of money. They just need to, I mean, if you can do the internet, man, let me just put it like this. When I was in the army, man, we could go to any remote location. It didn't matter where in the world we went. We could take our vehicles and our satellites and all we had, and we could lock in. And within an hour or so, we're calling back. Within an hour or so, we have internet capacity. We could do, so I don't know why it's difficult over here. But I'm telling you, somebody with IT, Boy, you can make a lot of money over here. But uh, so I'm saying, this is 1960. It's what I'm what I'm experiencing here. But that means you get an opportunity to get in on the ground floor of what's about to happen. And guess what? You may not get there, Moses but those Joshua's that you have in your bloodline will. And guess what? Here it is, 2021. And we're still talking about Moses. Now unto him that is able to keep all of us from falling and present us falling before the throne of grace. May the spirit of God rest, rule, and abide within you henceforth now and forevermore. I pray all of God's children say amen. If you really love the Lord, say amen again. And if you believe God can open up a window of heaven, pull you out of blessing you have not room to receive, please say amen again. God bless you. When you wake up this morning, I pray you have a great day. God bless you. It's Monday morning. I pray you have a great week. God bless you. I pray you have a great rest of your life. Thank you. Oh my God, God is so good, y'all.
So watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this. I'm gonna show you something. I'm just trying to show you something here. Look right there. It's my man in the red shirt. He's working. He's African. He's Tanzanian. Watch this. Let me do it like this. Make it better. Hold on a second. Hold on one second. See the guy in the red shirt? He is African. He's Tanzanian. He's working, man. He's working. He's getting to work on. But watch this. Oh, do, 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 now, I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see them for the sit them down low. But there you go. You get the point. You get the picture. They running things. They running this little place, man. So don't think. So other people see stuff that you don't see. You think Africa don't have no money? Well, somebody say it got money over here. Anyway, I'm out of here, y'all. I'm getting ready to get my day started. Go get me some sugar cane juice from the Rio Cocoa Beach. Anyway, this is my. Sorry about that. God bless y'all.